700 grams of coke and five pounds of weed to Maryland. Wow. Mm-hmm. And my transporter got caught. And I thought she was going to tell on me. And she didn't. She didn't tell. So we bailed her out and we got her a lawyer and the lawyer beat the charge. Wow. Um, for legal search and seizure. But I'm like, yo, if she would have told. That would have been over. Bro, my whole life. Like, ain't no, ain't, we ain't interviewing right now. Yeah, we on Boss Talk TV. Shout out to E. He the reason you see. Just that lifestyle. It was like it was just, just making like, sure that everybody we, we gonna be straight. Yeah. It's like yo, if, if I gotta if I gotta take one for all of us to be straight, then it's like now I really understand why when I seen you teaching about transferring your life to this to that. Now it makes sense because I really never got the detail of the story. Mm. But I just seen you on the chalkboard. I seen you on the whiteboard doing this and showing that. Like, who is this guy? What is he talking about? But with your credentials, the way you just laid them out, right. I understand that, that that you would know. Like, it, I, it's the same thing. And that was my first felony. I had three of them. Wow. And then I went to prison in Maryland and then prison in Jersey. And my, wow. my cellmate was How double life. How long did you stay? Um, t- total, total two and a half years between all three, oh, all, all so three was, states. You never really got like, Smart. a long yeah, stay. God was giving me grace, man, and, that, and that's what happens. So I was at twenty five years old. I was like, oh, bro, like you still selling dope? All right, I had a, I had a, I had a red cherry red Navigator at nineteen. I paid cash for off the lot. I had some jewelry, Cartier, this and that third. But I'm like, yo, bro, you got some 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 you know some street stats. But you're twenty five. You got three felonies. You get locked up again. Mm-hmm. Going three away, way, you know what I'm yeah. saying? Um, and it's like, you're still selling drugs. And now you, I'm even selling drugs worse though, because prior to me selling dope in Newark, I had sent 700 grams of coke and five pounds of weed to Maryland. Wow. And my transporter got caught. And I thought she was gonna tell on me. And she didn't. She didn't tell. So we bailed her out and we got her a lawyer and the lawyer beat the charge. Wow. Um, for legal search and seizure. But I'm like, yo, if she would have told that that was was it. Bro, my whole like, ain't no ain't we ain't interviewing right now. No, nah, not at all. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Ain't no Jay Morris saying none of the things. To be so 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 I switched my hustle from selling coke to selling dope. I'm like, all right, well, my coke route busted. I'm gonna start selling heroin now. <laughs> well, now I'm, I'm selling the so boy. So I get to this point where I'm approaching 25. It's 24 still. Approach 25. I'm just like, yo, this ain't looking as bright as it did. Any more kids yet at this point? Nah. Okay. I'm like, this ain't looking as bright as it did. Years ago, I believed in it. I believed in a dope game. I believed in... So yeah, 25, man. So the brick wall for me was not the consequences of something external. It was all internal. Mm-hmm. It was like, are you a drug dealer or are you a hustler? Mm-hmm. If you're a drug dealer, you only can sell drugs. Mm-hmm. If you're a hustler, you hustle anything. Mm-hmm. So when I was on, on parole in, in 2002, when I was 22, 22 years old, I was on parole. Uh, a, a mentor at a Saturday men's group that I had to go to, Pastor Antoine Thomas, um, I was ready to go back to prison because I hated parole. So I'm mm-hmm. like, you know what? I'm about to turn myself back in. Mm-hmm. I'm about to go to jail because I hate this parole. I hate this curfew. Breath of life. Yeah, just go ahead and just yeah, serve this whole time and then yeah, y'all I'm, out of my life. This is, this is my bright 22-year-old idea. Like, <laughs> right. yo, I'm going back to jail. Like, I'm just, right. just, I don't like this. So the pastor was like, all right, bright idea. Before you do, take this business card. My wife's a, mor- a processor at a mortgage company, and I want you to go apply. I'm like, I don't know about the mortgages. He's like, yo, just try. So I went to the mortgage company, and I, I applied. They accepted me on a commission basis to be a loan officer. They started teaching me about credit and how to build credit and about financing and real estate and mortgages. And um, And it was fascinating to you? It was cool, but what was fascinating is my grandmother let me refinance her house, which was just paperwork, application, boom, boom. And I made like Mm 3,000. And then my aunt let me refinance her house and made 3,000. It's the money that fascinates me. I made 6,000 in like 45 days. And I was like, yo, I ain't have to do nothing for real. Like, Pushing papers, like. But most dope dealers would be like, even just that amount, they'd be like, that's not enough. I need but to. I'm already looking at scale, though. It was like, all right, that's just two people, but I'm just like, the fact that you gotta think to make 6,000 in the street, at least at the level I was at then, is like, I gotta take a lot of risk to make mm-hmm, 6,000. Mm-hmm. I gotta be standing in the sun, I gotta be standing in the, in the rain, in the mm-hmm. winter, I gotta have a whole block running. Like, there's a, right. lot of, a lot of variables here. Yeah. But I just made 6,000 for sliding some papers. Some paper, like, Bro, that's easy breezy. Yeah, that's one thing I've always said, um, even way before I even met my husband, because I always knew, even back home, I knew a lot of people who did certain things. And I used to always say, if you can be out here hustling in these streets, you can turn what you, because you know how to do money really good. Most of these guys can look at money and know exactly how much, just mm-hmm. look at, you know, the thickness and be like, oh, that's such and such, that's such and such. And if you have a group of people working for you, you delegating 
responsibilities. All the skills. There's so you handling much with skills. inventory. You handling with exactly. transport. You handling with I'm accounting. Like, if you can do all of that, why wouldn't you turn around and be an entrepreneur running your own business where you're not looking over your shoulder? Exposure and belief in self. See, I had the exposure part handled because someone introduced me in a mentorship program mm -hmm. to real estate. But I still hadn't believed that I was bigger than a block. Mm. And so at 25, I challenged myself, like, yo, if you're really the man, like, bro, if you're really the man, you should be there going real estate and be able to do the same thing. I'm like, yeah. I'm you can flip anything. Any, anybody who is in the streets can flip anything. You got to apply yourself and you got to learn that new industry. Right. That's the part that we don't want to yeah, do, yeah, right? Yeah. You can't talk and dress the same way and not understand the lingo of real estate. You got to mm -hmm. understand what an ROI is, what an LTV is, what an ARV is, right? What a loan origination is and equity and appreciation and you know what I'm saying? So um, I just challenged myself. So I didn't get caught or nothing like that. I literally quit one day. Wow. That day I quit. I was and like, man. Because you had another job, which was real estate. Yeah, no, I didn't even have the job then. I was going to go get the license and the go license. do it. Okay. I just knew that, I just felt like my time had expired. And mm -hmm. it's like either I'm gonna expire it or it's gonna expire me. Yeah, we on Boss Talk TV. Shout out to E-Heat, reason you see me.